I know, I know, I'm the worst YouTuber ever. I haven't made a video on one of my biggest updates, this mare right here, but I'm making it now, so we're just gonna make up for it. <laughs> Diesel, what are you doing? Anyway, so this is Katie. She has a couple different names. Her real name is Catherine, but we call her Katie because my aunt's name is Catherine, and that's kind of weird. I got her a few weeks, months, I don't really know, before I left. I think it was like a month before I left for the Congress. Um, so she's kind of been on the back burner because of that, because Diesel was my focus for that whole period of time. Um, but I was really, really excited to get her, and now she's got my focus since Diesel is on a little bit of a break for doing whatever he does, that long trip. But I will tell you guys a little bit about her and my intentions with her and answer all the overwhelming questions that I've gotten about her. Her registered name is Catherine Sophia and that might sound familiar because that was a racehorse's name, but she is a quarter horse, she is papered, everything else. She's by Hot and Blazing out of an appendix mare, a duplicated star I believe is her name. Um, She's got the quietest temperament I have ever met. She literally doesn't care about anything. I mean, look at that face. She's precious. I love her. Um, she's about 16'3 right now. She's a big mare. I have a type, big bay with a star. So as for the most asked question, do I own her and will I be selling her? And what are my plans and intentions with her? I do own her. I don't know what Diesel's doing. I really don't. I, I just... <sighs> We're just gonna ignore him. Anyway, <laughs> unfortunately I can't keep them all and she is an extremely talented mare and I would love to keep her, but unfortunately that's not a reality. Um, I just, I really love having, young, having a young horse in the barn and everything that comes with it and watching them grow up and learn and develop. She's coming really, really far away in the few rides that I've had on her. So I'm just really excited to see where she goes. I might show her a little bit and then maybe sell in their future. But as of right now, she is a personal project for me, and that's all there is to it. So we're just going to see where she goes and see how far she can go with me and go from there. But I'm in no rush. She's in no rush, obviously. She's a very, very lazy girl. I got her from some local trainers that I have an immense amount of love and appreciation for. Um, they actually personally owned her, and they have a full barn of client horses, so they just didn't have time for her, honestly. But they've owned her since she was a weanling, so they know plenty about her, and I got all her records and everything else, so totally... You know awesome experience there um so yeah i think that's all the information i can think of right now but i'm going to go ahead and tack up and ride her real quick and i figured i would bring you guys along on the journey as much as i can remember to film um on her progress and everything like that so so i'm just going to lunge her really quick and then pop a ride on her and um and we'll see how she goes she's been doing really really well um she is three years old i forgot to mention that and the trainers like i said just didn't have a lot of time so she's I, th I don't remember how many days they had or, or, like on her back, um, but she's been hauled to a couple shows. She's never been actually shown before, um, but she's, you know, at the point now where she's like working with the bit, getting tired of my nonsense, <laughs> apparently, um, you know, working with the bit, moving her body and everything like that. And that's just kind of what we're focusing on right now. Why are my horses so weird? I don't know. Um, but we're just moving her shoulders, getting her moving forward, getting her confidence up. <laughs> um and going from there so hopefully i remembered a video enough to show you guys the progress progress of this wonderful wonderful mare I also do want to clarify really quick while I'm thinking about it um, because obviously you guys do see her wearing a western saddle and I get questions about it all the time. She will be a hunt seat mare. Um, the western saddle is simply a work saddle um, but it does not change the way that I ride her. But because she is a baby mare, I ride her in the work saddle. So even though this mare has given me no problems with the saddle, like no bronking, no cold back issues, nothing like that, I do still lunge her with the saddle only because it's fair for her to warm up and get used to the movement on her back, especially as the temperatures are dropping. But like I said before, she's a very quiet mare, and this is honestly as, quote, wild as she gets at any point. Um, she's a very, very good girl, and I really love how flat she moves in the front as well as how respectful she is in the round pen. She's always listening to me to a point, you know, taking the opportunity to get her energies out, but never blowing past me and always keeping an ear to me.
When it comes to her under saddle work, um, like I said, I've been working on moving her shoulders around a lot, you know, gaining control of her body. Um, one thing that I've tried not to focus on is her face and her head. Um, I think there's a lot of issues with shutting horses down in the front by focusing on their headset way too soon. You'll also see that this mare is at the point where I'm kind of opening my hands, opening that door and pushing her through it to find that contact in the bit on her own, um, make it her idea to stretch down into that bit and really use her neck and everything. Um, I'm keeping her body impulsion moving forward and giving it somewhere to go rather than forcing her head down and giving that kind of fake frame. And obviously a lot of work went into what you see right here that I did not film, um, but we really just focused a lot on moving off my leg, moving her shoulders, moving her hips in order to be able to move her body without me having to hold her face and everything rely on the face. So I want to emphasize again that it's really, really important to focus on the body before you focus on the face. You'll see right here a little bit of miscommunication between the two of us. Um, like I said earlier, I have to push a lot in order to keep her going and everything like that. Um, and she just misunderstood and took a little canter step off, but it wasn't an ugly canter step. She didn't do anything necessarily bad. Um, so I just corrected it and softened her back up and moved on and made it no big deal. Just say, hey, that's not what we're doing right now and go back to what we were doing. Another thing with the babies is you can't reprimand everything that they do that's not on track with a completely broke show horse. So right here, when I did ask her to canter off, she cantered off very softly. She did as I asked, but she did pick her head up in the air. And honestly, it didn't bother me that much just because I know she's still working on her transitions and she's not strong enough to be able to hold her top line over and, you know, soften and excuse my phone notification right there. Um, but, you know, it's not that big of a deal. And she didn't do anything malicious. So we just carried on and we'll make it a little bit softer next time. She's becoming very, very consistent both ways, and you'll get to see her canon transition this way. You can kind of see her thinking about it a little more. Um, she had to figure out her feet and where they were going to go before she took off. So again, not something I reprimanded, but something that I could really see her trying and thinking. So no reason to discipline her there. And again, just really focusing on pushing forward, 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 you know, listening to me, softening up, you know, just basic things right now. But that's going to sum it up for this little edition of the Mare Vlog, and I hope I answered a bunch of questions for you guys and that this was something enjoyable to watch, and I'll try to keep updated with it, but you know me. But I'm also really bad at filming outros, for, so, and also speaking words, so we're just going to settle for this. It's fine. It's whatever. But anyways, keep an eye out for more stuff about her on my Instagram, and hopefully up, updates through here, and I will see you guys on the next one. Real quick, I also want to introduce you guys to a new product I've been working with and I'm really, really excited about. My family has been involved with this for many, many years and I'm really excited to get into it as well. I found a lot of use for essential oils and the Young Living brand in the barn and I'm really excited to share it with you guys. The package that I got right here, it came with this diffuser, which I love diffusers so much. Oop, peep my broken nail. Um, but anyways, you just put some essential oils in there and I think this one also has light effects, I believe. Yes, it does. Um, and it lets off a really soft light and then um, diffuses the oils, obviously, and lets them into the room with a really, really nice scent, really calming scent. It really changes the mood and the aura of the room, honestly. Um, I have one in my trailer that I love. Um, and then in here, we've got a product guide. It also came with this little one, Digize, which I'm excited to try. My sister told me a lot about good stuff about that one. And then we have this little package right here, which I just had to open, but it's fine. <laughs> oh my gosh. Can I still not open with this one on hand? I don't know. Oh, there we go. Ooh, all right, so we've got in here some more um, lifestyle guides and everything like that. And then we've got, let's see what we have in here. Oopsies. So in this starter package, it comes with peppermint, lemon, thieves, citrus flesh. Oop, come on. Another digize. Raven, valor. What is, ooh. Panaway, lavender, and frankincense. And I have personally used a lot of these. Um, Panaway and lavender and peppermint are a few of my favorites. Thieves is my favorite scent to put in the diffuser. Oh, and peep my Christmas leggings. We're doing good. Um, peppermint is really awesome for um, bug bites and everything like that. Panaway, of course, is a great one for pain or anything like that. 
I put that like in baths and, and like you can put that in the horse's baths and like put it in their water and mix it around. It's really, really awesome. It's like a liniment. The lavender is great for calming or skin issues or anything like that. I'll put that on, you know, things like rain rot or, you know, fungus or anything like that. It clears it up in very, very quickly time. That was not a sentence, but very, very sl small amount of time. I highly suggest checking all this stuff out and this is an incredible deal. So I'll put the link to all this stuff in my description and you can contact my sister about it and she will set you up and she's super awesome to work with. I highly recommend getting into this. You guys will see a lot of this in my upcoming videos and posts.